Alright, you can open your Bibles to Psalm chapter 95. Psalm 95. We had uh, Miss, Miss Sarah, or Jesse, one of them yesterday, was like, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up. Could you preach a Thanksgiving song? I said, no. <laughs> no. I'm preaching on you a bunch of half back rats. <laughs> You know, the independent Baptist way. No, of course not. Of course, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, let me make sure my phone's turned off here. Yes, okay. Uh, just to rip her a little bit. Uh, but I do have a Thanksgiving one tonight. And I hope, uh, man, I, I hope, of course, we all want, every preacher wants every sermon to set in. Uh, but um, I hope it'll be a blessing to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the baptism. Thank you for the visitors. Lord, I, I look forward to next week where we have um, uh, uh, more baptisms lined up and the bus rolling again and more people want to ride. And more people want to come. Lord, that's a, wow, what a blessing it is. They used to be things that we prayed about and said, oh, Lord, if we could do it again. Oh, Lord, that we might do it again. And goes, well, there's work involved. Yeah, but it's worthy work. Uh, Lord, thank you for those for everyone who pitched in and everyone who, some more than others, but everyone did some. Lord, thank you for them. Uh, thank you for the people that uh, are working currently on in ministries. Lord, I ask that you raise up people, teachers and workers and drivers and a uh, junior church preacher. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, work on the hearts of the people. You'll build your church. Help us to be faithful. But Lord, help us during this season. This time that we're in where all oh, harvest and thanksgiving and things like that where we can get caught up in the, the chaos. Help it not to be so. Help us to have thanksgiving in our heart. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I saw, uh, as I was watching uh, the Bears lose today, I was watching a uh, commercial came on and it said, it's, it's time for the holidays, so you know what that means. Stress. And I'm like, why? Who says? The stress comes from the undue expectations of society that society puts on us. And I say, hang that mess. Say, you can't make me. Now, I have Christmas gifts and to give and a house to welcome people into. And, you know, so I, I, I get it. You know, we forgot the ice for the cooler and the turkey's not done. I, okay, I get it. I get it. Uh, but what can you do? Can you quickly, like, heat up the turkey? Can you quickly just make everything you can? It is what it is. All right, let's move on. You know, let's move on. Just get your uh, mother-in-law to put her finger in the drink. It'll be ice cold in seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay. And the funny thing is, is that's, not a, that's not a male chauvinist joke because everybody that's right, you've got a mother-in-law. My wife has a mother-in-law. I have a mother-in-law, so it goes both ways. Your wife's mother. Your wife's mother-in-law is a wonderful woman. <laughs> my wife's wonderful. Oh, yeah, because the husband back there is speaking. Uh, and you're right, she is. But I'm just saying it goes both. It goes both ways. Uh, for and I know my crowd's on my side. Too. Uh, but uh, somebody said, um, "Oh, it doesn't matter. Let's move on here. Dig a deeper hole." <laughs> All right, November. November. Uh, Psalm 95, let's look at verse number 1, let's read the chapter. The Bible says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all, the God, above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is also it is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship, bow down, uh, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me. Proved me and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. I, I want to pick out 
verse number two uh, specifically in here, and then I have several other verses. Uh, throughout the Bible. It says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Now, uh, thanksgiving comes around uh, once once a week. You know, I know what it's all about. Um, the, Mayflower, the Mayflower and the pilgrims and the Indians and, you know, and whatnot and the history that kind of goes into it and how revisionist history wants to change it. And people say, well, those were fallacies that have just been passed down. Well, I don't know. I don't, um, the, the what's true and what's not doesn't take away from the principle of being thankful. Amen. Uh, it doesn't take away from, from, from those facts of, of, uh, that God says to be thankful, to give thanks. And I believe the Lord would be a lot happier with his people and we would find ourselves a lot happier also, excuse me, a lot more joyful if we found thanks to give in situations of our life. Uh, the Bible says in uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks. In it, now you all heard it, heard it before. In everything give thanks, not for everything. You don't have to be thankful for bankruptcy. You don't have to be thankful for cancer. You don't have to be thankful for uh, a broken body. You don't have to be thankful for a, fra for a fractured family. You don't have to be thankful for the ills and the pains and the burdens of life. But you can be thankful in them. And you can't keep thankful people down. Right. You can't. Right. You're like, what? How do you keep going? Thankfulness. Yeah. Truly. Thankfulness. Well, what do you have to be thankful for? You'll find that thankful people don't go, mm. well, then give me a minute and I'll tell you some things that I'm thankful for. They can rattle off things right off the top of their head. Or should I say right off the top of their heart? Right just from the heart. Man, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this. Because a thankful lifestyle is a lifestyle that's always prepared to give an answer of the hope that people ask about. What's your deal? Yeah. What's going on? What's your deal? Why are you chipper through this, through what you're going through? And it's not necessarily always chipper. But even in those, those conversations, those moments where you just bow your head in, in a, 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 a tiresome sigh, but the moment you see somebody else that's tired, and you say, hey man, keep your head up, it's all gonna, it's all gonna, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right. You'll even find that people, that the thankful people, when they're going through their toughest times, are encouragers to other people. Because you'll notice that thankfulness, thankfulness keeps people going. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, Concerning you. Now, I want to talk about it, could, it would be cliche almost to say how to have Thanksgiving 365 days a year or, uh, you know, something along those lines. But I want to have, say how to always have Thanksgiving or how to uh, have Thanksgiving every day. How to have Thanksgiving every day. Uh, and it's easy for somebody to say, get up and just be thankful every day. Well, I need a formula. And if you give me a formula, I can follow that. Right. Just be, be thankful. Well, it's hard. It's hard to be thankful. Super duper difficult to be. And, and you, man, I got back into town. I got, and I got back into town. I was happy to be home. But um, I, I don't leave town. Now I don't thank the Lord. I'm, I'm home mostly. Uh, but I leave town and I forgot what it was like to leave town and come back. And, say, and then people report to me and say, all right, this needs addressed and this needs addressed and this needs addressed at home. And this is the situation at school. And this is the situation at the church building. And this is what's happening with the furnace. And, this, and by the way, thank God for warmth. Amen. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was too cold. This week, it's too warm. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and the baptistry heater and this and that and this and that and this. And before I knew it, my thankfulness of being home was gone. It was lost in, in the weeds. And then as the day progressed, I said, all right, look, it, no, it's fine. It's fine. This is, this is, it's okay. This is, this is my chaos. This is, and it's not chaos. These are, these, this, these are my problems. These are my issues. This is what I was made for. I was built for this. This is what God has called me to. So therefore, I'm glad. I have drywall to do. I'm glad there's a bus to paint. I'm glad there's a there's a project that we're going to do to help people get onto the platform a little easier. At least 
At least it's project one. There may be another one, but I think this is the one. You know, this will be the one. I'm glad I'm working on the baptistry. I'm glad to, to talk to people about that baptism. I'm glad about doing those things because I'm in the ministry and I'm working in eternal, um, uh, uh, I'm working with eternal dividends here that are going to pay off in the future. I'm working on e with eternal blessings and eternal uh, 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 treasures that one day I will be able to be a recipient of, that I'll be able to give back. So yes, it's, it's the chaos of today. Uh, and even the, um, the radiator on the car and the tire on the truck and the chip in the windshield and, you know, the, um, uh, you know, I got in the, the car yesterday. We went to the store, took Deacon with me. And I got in, and then I put him in. I made sure his door was closed. And I got in my side, and I made sure my door was closed. But the lights inside the vehicle would not go off. What's the deal? What's going on? So I made sure that the dimmer switch was turned down. You know, okay, so it's not that. So therefore, I started looking at my side mirrors, and I noticed... Whoever got out of uh, the driver's side passenger back door didn't close it all the way. If I had not used that vehicle to go to the store, we would have came out for church this morning and the battery would have been dead. So my first response was like, stinking kids. My second response was, Lord, thank you for allowing me to take this vehicle so I could find the door was open and close the door. You see, our situations are what we make of them. They're what we make of them. Uh, and I understand sometimes you feel like you get piled on. Piled on, piled on, piled on, piled on, piled on. <laughs> I am not thankful for these things. Nope, there it is. Right, you're not thankful for them. But you can be thankful in them. Uh, I want us to consider just a couple of things. And, and I hope that you'll do these things. Um, uh, always, number one, always pray. Always pray with thankfulness. Always pray with thankfulness. I'm not saying you have to spend your prayer time thanking, but um, thankfulness can be your wingman as you go to the bold, go boldly to the throne of grace, saying, "Lord, I'm here to ask these things." To these things and thankfulness is present with you because you can go to the throne of grace. You know, there are some people who cannot go to the throne of grace. They don't know how and they don't know that they're allowed to. They think they have to go to some, some other man or they have to go to somebody else who can go to the throne of grace for them. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your... Excuse me. Let your request be made known unto God. Ah, there it is. It says, uh, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Asking and supplication. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. And what Philippians 5, or 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything give thanks. In every prayer time, give thanks. In every time, listen, I, 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 man, if you really buckle down on the subject, you know, what, what do you have? You have them. Um, uh, 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 thanksgiving, uh, supplication, intercession, confession, and um, uh, come on, Jackson. Let me put them in order. Uh, praise. 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 Yeah, there we go. Praise, thanksgiving. There it is. Praise, thanksgiving, confession, supplication, intercession. Or however you do it. I told people before, I've gotten, I've gotten into my prayer time before. I didn't get to any other ones. I was just, I, I did praise for Praise and thanksgiving. I've spent whole prayer times in confession before. I've spent whole prayer times in supplications before. Whole prayer times in intercessions before. It's not that I have to nail all five of them every single time. But I go to the Lord with thanksgiving present and I say, okay, this is the God of the universe. What does he want? How can I please him? Right. Being thankful. Right. Being thankful. Right. Being thankful. Uh, Colossians 4.2 says, continue in prayer and watch... The same with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer and watch the same with thanksgiving. Now, here's some of the things that will th come about when we pray with thanksgiving. It's going to lead to happiness in your prayer life. The prayer time's not going to feel like drudgery. Prayer time's not going to feel like 
a, a burden to do. And I've been burdened as I pray. I've felt a heaviness as I've prayed before. But I, it's going to lead to happiness in my prayer life because I know that I'm taking all these burdens and all these cares and all these things to my Heavenly Father and He will answer them. So it's going to lead to happiness. Secondly, it's going to per, put your heart into your prayer life. If you are if you have an attitude and a position of thankfulness, you're going to pray with your heart. With your heart. I pray so many times with my head. With my head, with my head, with my head. Because I got all this stuff in there, and I remember so and so need to pray for, and I remember this checklist, and I remember that. And we just, I just kind of do these fluff prayers sometimes as tradition to kind of get us through, the, navigate us through the service. And I'm not saying I have to fall on my face prostrate before the Lord every single time I go before Him during church to, to get the service going along. But man, to pray with our heart, and God knows if we're praying with our heart or not. We know if we're praying with our heart or not. And by the way, you only may be able to pray with this much capacity of your heart. You say, I don't know how to pray with all my heart yet, but I'm, I'm trying. All right, cool. God knows your heart. Keep on keeping on. And when you become thankful, thankful. And by the way, thankful is not like, I'm living life great. Singing in the rain. Oh, wait, I can't do those things. They're copyrighted. Uh, Brother Joe told me today, he said, sometimes you sing songs and we get a notice from YouTube. Uh, we're not in trouble. We don't own any fines, but... Sometimes you sing songs and they tell us, hey, there's a copyright on that song. So, dippity-doo-dah, uh, dippity uh, You know, I, I, my heart is full of joy. It is in life all just wonderful rose petals and sunshine. No, it's not. It's not. Thankfulness, a lifestyle of thankfulness is not built on the foundations of the sunny, beautiful, perfect weather days. A foundation of thankfulness is built on the days when it's raining, when there's a cloud over your head, you got a flat tire, the baby's crying, the dog got let out, somebody left the garage door open, and the coffee pot was left on, and the, the first time in history, a crock pot meal got burnt. Yeah, you know how, man, what is going on? That's where thankfulness comes through. That's where thankfulness happens. Your house burns down, your car, get, you get in a car accident, Hey, how about you get sick, your spouse gets sick, your kid gets sick, you lose your job. Man, oh man. Man, oh man. Thankfulness. Thankfulness, thankfulness. It'll put your heart, it'll put your heart in, it'll, into your prayer life. A lot of people stop praying because their heart's not in it. Our heart's not in it. So happiness in your prayer life, your heart will be in your prayer life, and it will put hope in your prayer life. A lot of people don't pray because they're hopeless. That's good. That's good. They don't have hope. They just go, oh, God, it's a, it's a shot. They go, ah! And they just kind of shoot it up. Well, man, I hope it sticks to something. Instead, we can point our arrows of prayer and say, I know exactly. I know exactly where this arrow is going. And you let go and you know it's going to the throne of grace. You know it's going. Or you take all your burdens, as 1 Peter 5, 7 says, and you say, you say I, I, I'm going to cast them. I, I hope they go to the feet of Jesus. No, it says when you cast your feet in your heart at the feet of Jesus, that's where they go. Casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Man, I would not pray if I did not have hope that he would hear me. And I have evidence that he's heard me. Evidence time and time and time and time again. I've looked around and went, man, that right there is a prayer answer. That right there was a prayer asked and a prayer answered. This home right here was a prayer asked for. Not this house, not this driveway, but a house, a driveway. Not this car, but a car. Not this situation. It is, uh, folks, we're so quick to forget what God has done for us. We're so, we, we, dear God, give me this blessing. And he gives us a blessing and we quickly move on. And I've been there before. I'm like, Lord, look, if you'll just give me all the things that I need in one fell swoop. You just give me all those things now. I can get to a plane where I can, and I explain my philosophy of how I would better my relationship with the Lord. If I would just get all these things. <laughs> Man, and the Lord's like, no, you have all these needs. And each one of them, each one of them keeps you coming back to me. Each one keeps you coming back. 
So I'm going to keep on giving. You're going to continue to have these problems. And not the, Lord, lift me up and uh, let me stand. Uh, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. You know, I, I like to get to a, a place where, you know, uh, all of life's problems are fixed. But that, that no, that's when you're in heaven. Amen. Um, uh, 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 but I, I continue to pray because I have hope, because I have thankfulness. It's rooted back. We have something in class where uh, in, in school where we've been going over um, surface surface problems, root causes. Surface problems trace back to root causes. What is the root cause? What is causing this thing to come up on the surface? What is that? All right, well, it's the same thing here. Thankfulness helps give me hope, helps put my heart into my prayer, and helps give me happiness. So remember God's blessings. Folks, if God blessed you in the past, he can do it now still today. Right. If God blessed you before, he can still do it. If God blessed this church before, he can still do it. Amen. If God gave you happy times in your marriage before, he can do it again. Come on. If God had you had good relationships with your children before, he can do it again. But we cannot do it on our own strength and on our own might. It's going to God and saying, God, we depend on you. God, let I, I claim what David said. I love David I would say several times, let me not be ashamed. 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 He's saying, God, don't embarrass me. God, don't leave me hanging high and dry. Lord, I'm claiming your promises. Now, Lord, I know I'm not a perfect man. I have failed them, but Lord, I'm trying. And God looks at you, he knows you're not perfect, but you can say, Lord, I am. I know I'm wrong in these areas, and they are ever before me. I have sinned against God and God alone. Lord, forgive me of these. Help me to get them right. But in the meantime, Lord, I am in need. And I am in need, Lord. I, I need you to help me do this. God will help you do it. God is a great restorer, a great reviver, a great redeemer, and God likes redoing, amen. God loves redoing. Revive us again. Amen. Restore. I like to think of it as a comeback story. Amen. I like, I love those stories. Good stuff. Man, I love war movies and, and boxing movies and sports movies where the underdog was man, down for the count. Or man, it was a battle in the ring and they were just going at it. And the guy was thought to not have a chance against this other guy. And man, he got knocked down, but he wouldn't quit. And he got knocked down and he kept getting up. And man, the last, the last minute of the last round, man, he just kept going and boom, it just took one, one punch to connect. I believe in that stuff. And sometimes the Lord takes us to the last minute of the last round to see if you'll just keep on going. Now, he doesn't do that every time. He doesn't take you to the last minute of the last round every time, but sometimes he does. Because what, what comes from that? I'll tell you what comes from that. Build strength and lessons saying, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. It's, it's as simple as that. How, how, how shallow yet how deep is that one phrase? Don't quit. No, no matter what comes, no matter what's said, no matter what happens, don't you dare quit on God because he didn't quit on us. Remember, remember what God did for you in the past and God can do it again. Number one, always pray with thanksgiving. Always pray with thanksgiving. Much things come through prayer. Number two, always, the Bible says, always pay your tithes and offerings with thanksgiving. The Bible says that the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. I'm going to read this passage to you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11. Stick with me. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Uh, reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound in every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both ministereth bread for your food, and multiplieth your seed sown, and increaseth the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes, uh, causes through us thanksgiving to God. God saying, you give, you give cheerfully. You're going to watch and see what happens here. 
You will receive bountifully and you'll be thankful for it, which helps you give cheerfully, which you receive bountifully, which you are thankful for, which you give more and God gives more. Man, it's the circle of, it's the circle of God's finances there. Real simple. You be obedient and happy doing it. Happy about what? Happy that I'm giving money? No. Happy that I'm giving knowing God gave promises to reward me for my giving. And you're like, so you're just giving because you get something on the tail end? Kind of. Well, kind of. It's not that I'm giving the thing on the tail end. It's that I am causing God to action on right. my action. Right, that's it. Right. That's it. God, is, God is spurred into action right. on it. behalf of my faith and obedience to his word. Right. Right. So if I go, oh, I don't want the pastor to pick me. I don't want the pastor to brown about my tithe and offering. Stop. Well, you lose out. You lose out. I've told people before, man, I become a pastor of this church. I'm not the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to act like, oh, well, I'm going to try to act like Jesus. But I'm not the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say, dear God in heaven, what do you want me to preach? What are the truths of the Bible? I'm going to preach those. And I'm just going to, let, what do they say, let the chips fall where they are? Right. I'm sorry if the word of God is a cinder block on your pinky toe. I can't do anything about that. And I'm not going to apologize for it either. But at the same time, I'm not going to go, mm, I know what you did. Unless you're some, unless you're a, 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 a somebody who needs it. Who's causing discord in the church. And like I said before, I'm not, um, people fall, you know, but we make mistakes. We have quarrels amongst each other sometimes and it needs to be worked out. But there's a difference when somebody crosses a line and becomes a scorner and a fool in a church. Uh, the Bible says don't mark them, which cause divisions among you. Yeah. So uh, I will gladly be 52 bomb somebody who wants to come into this church and disrupt our peace. So copyright that. Uh, <laughs> so, so when we pay our tithes and when we pay our offerings, it's not grudgingly. It says not grudgingly or out of necessity. It's like uh, I've been giving for, uh, you know, whatever, for 20 years straight I've been giving. Okay, that's wonderful. But do you, are in your heart, do you ask you? Do you ask yourself, I've been giving to like keep this track record. I've been giving because you know I wear it as a badge of honor. That's that's great. That, I'm, look, there's nothing wrong with those things. But if those are your reasons, they're the wrong reasons. Right. There's, give for twenty years straight because you're glad to do it. Yeah. Give for ten years straight. Give until you die because you're glad to do it. Because the Lord says, "You give and I'll give it back." And when you receive of me, you'll be thankful. You'll be thankful. I can't help it. This, this is recency bias. But man, folks, we're living, I am living in an answer to prayer. I'm living in that. I, I can't get over it. I can't get over it. The day, uh, May 9th, was my last day driving a truck full time. And I got up on uh, uh, May 12th and said, folks, I'm going full time. Going full time. Um, and uh, no, I do, I, I, I don't know the last time I drove for them. It's, it's been a, a couple of months now. Uh, to the point where people go, are you, are you picking up side for them anymore? I don't know. <laughs> no. Um, but that's okay. I'm, hey, cool. Because I mean, we're living in the basement of the church. We tried to do the upstairs, but they wouldn't permit us. And it would have cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to get, to get it the way that the city would have approved if they would have approved it. So it's like uh, the door closed on it. You know, slam the door. So we're living in the basement of the church. Uh, and we were like, all right, you know, this is just for time. And man, every weekend I get home and I get on Facebook Marketplace and Zillow and Realtor and all these things and look and look and look and look and look and look. And look. I can't find a place. I can't find a place. Uh, a week later, two weeks later, I don't even get, let me see, May, June. So just two weeks later uh, or so, um, here I am doing the same old looking, and I, I get on Facebook Marketplace. I kind of like to see what people are selling. You know, there's all kinds of cool stuff out there. There's somebody that's got a plane on there for $349,000. I'm starting to go fund me. Uh, I, <laughs> um, uh, so here I am scrolling, and I see this house. This is a scam. <laughs> this is a scam. So I hit, is this still available? And immediately, yeah, come on and check it out. We go out there and check it out. Long story short, now we live there. 
on a handshake and an ad worry about two, two days later, two days later, boom, there it is. I'm still walking around going, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I want to be able to, if the Lord would permit it that we're able to stay out there and make that a forever home for ourselves, and that would be great. If not, then the Lord's got other plans. That's fine. But I'd love to be able to tell my grandkids one day, hey, did you ever hear the story about how we got? Yes, Grandpa. We heard it. I want to beat people. I don't want to beat people. I want to lift people and encourage people to go, well, if he did it for Pastor Jake, he can do it for me. Well, he did it for you because you're a pastor. No, he's not a respecter of persons. He's a respecter of persons that respect and honor and try to do his word. That's it. That's it. So thank God for provision of your needs. Thank God for the provision of your needs. Now, if you work a job and you pay your bills, thank God that you have a job to pay those bills. Well, I paid my bills. No, God paid them. Because what? No, you're not, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Those fingers, those, that no, those noses. I hope you don't have two noses. That, uh, those noses, uh, your nose, uh, 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 your nose, your mouth, your teeth, your tongue, your eyes, your eyebrows, your hair, your muscles, your ability to move, all that you are, all that you consist of isn't yours, it's God's. So thank God for it and praise God for it. Thank God that you're able to provide and when you come up short, that God is able to provide. Thank God for provision. Thank God for power to give you, to give you to do the work of God. Thank God that, uh, you know, when I looked at it, I thought, man, I, I don't know how long I'll be able to drive. I want to drive a bus. How neat would it be to drive a bus again for a while? But I don't know how long I'd be able to do it. I want God to give me energy to be able to preach and to teach and to um, teach Sunday school and to do church AM and church PM and Wednesday and teach at the school and go soul winning and uh, uh, make visits and, and uh, baptize and drive a school bus or uh, drive a uh, uh, drive the church bus and, 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 and teach my Sunday school class and counsel and all the things in between. And all that I'm able to accomplish, I want to turn around and say, God, thank you for giving me that ability to be able to do that. Why? Because you as a person, as a body, you're going to be used as a vessel for one or two things. A vessel for honor or a vessel for dishonor. A vessel for honor or a vessel for dishonor. And I want to be used for the Lord in the house of the Lord as a vessel for honor. Because I'm going to stand before the Lord God Almighty one day and answer for my life. I want him to say, Jackson, you burned the candle, you burned it hot, and I'm glad you did. And you motivated people at Three Rivers Baptist Church to do the same. And you, and you not only told them, but you showed them. That's what I want folks to see. That work for the, we said, work for the night is coming. Work through the sunny noon. And so on and so forth. I, I hate that song. Uh, <laughs> work. Work. Now, thank God for provision. Thank God for the power to give, uh, give you to the, do the work of God. And thank God for the promises of God. Thank God for the promises of God. Well, to provide your needs in the future as you give. God, if you keep on giving, we'll keep on giving. God, if you keep on doing, we'll keep on doing. God, if you keep on, we'll keep on. We'll keep on. Uh, and that's what God will do. And also to give thanks to provide the needs of the church as you give. Now, I, I'm glad that everybody gives. Because electricity comes into this building and it helps keep that heater, keep that water warm. And it keeps these lights on. And it pays for that furnace every year. <laughs> yeah. I told him, I said, his name is Bryce. I said, um, I said, Bryce, it does this every year. He goes, well, that's what we're trying to prevent. He's like, this year was just something different. He's like, but... Uh, I think there was one year where we went furnace on, and it worked like it was supposed to. Last year, they tuned it up real well. Uh, the building was warm throughout, but, you know, they had to come and do maintenance on it and bleed all the lines and do all these things. It took a bunch of work. But thank God we have it, amen. Thank God we have it. Thank God for everybody that does things and, do, and that is active around here. But as you give and the church's needs are met, God looks and goes, oh, they're taking care of the church, the church that I died for. That's why I get ticked off when I hear people complain and whine and cry about church. In church, you're a big baby. Go home and suck your thumb. He said, Brother Jake, you don't have to be mean. You're right, but Christ died for the church. Right. When I hear people cry and whine about it, it makes me angry. And it tells me right there they don't have a relationship and they're not thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. They're unthankful, ungrateful people. In church. 
Yeah, I can't wait for you to stand before the before God Almighty and go, mm, church. And God go, right in the boat, say amen. Uh, get you, fry you, amen. Uh, God's like, well, I you can't send you to hell, you're my child. So, Zap! Uh, you know, I know, I know, I know. God's not going to do that. Oh, uh, well, I can imagine it. Can't. He ought to. I love the church. Come on. I love the church that Christ died for. Amen. God called me to it. God called me to it. You know, it's a battle worth fighting for. And for to hear somebody, want another born again Christian uh, that doesn't act born again, whine and complain about the church and all the time and all the work that it takes to do it, it it's almost like being on a battlefield with a coward. It's like being on a battlefield with somebody who's like, I don't want to pull the trigger. I don't want to go to war. I don't want to go to war either, but guess what? Here we are, and it's a battle worth fighting. I have fought a good fight. Paul wasn't saying, I fought good. He was saying, the fight is good, and I fought it. Right. The cause is worthy, and I was engaged. And God gives honor to those who honor him. I want to be honored, not in any type of selfish way, but I want to do it because Jesus saved me. My motivation for everything and all we do around here at Three Rivers Baptist Church ought to be because we're saved and on our way to heaven and we were saved unto good works. Amen. So don't whine about the church. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. You know, why, why, why do we take God at his word for salvation, but we don't take him at his word for all the other blessings that come with it? We'll take, yes, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be my Savior. Well, why do you believe that? Well, the Bible says that. Well, what about the part where he says he'll bless you if you'll bless him? What part where, what about Malachi 3.10? Where it says, if you'll bring all the tithes into the storehouse and you'll be a cheerful, give, cheerful giver, that God will reward you and make you bountiful and open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. That there's not even room to receive it all. Well, well, no, we've got to believe all of it. We've got to believe the book and we've got to believe all of it. And number three, lastly, always praise God with thanksgiving. Always praise God with thanksgiving. Psalm 26, 7 says that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell all thy wondrous works. Man, I like looking at anybody. You, 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 honestly, you're maybe not a nature enthusiast, but you really you like nature. You like man the crest of a mountain. You like looking out on a valley somewhere. You like looking up at the stars at night. You love a far off thunderstorm that you can see rolling in. Man, you love the sandy beaches with the palm trees, and you love the Rocky Mountains, and you love the Appalachians, and you love uh, the uh, the red clay of out west, and you love uh, uh, Mount um, what's the one out in Chico Shasta, Mount Shasta, and you love the rolling hills of. Northeast Indiana. And you love um, uh, uh, the Ohio River Valley, amen. And you love, man, what a beauty. Man, I love nature. If it's beauty, and I look at that and go, God did that. God did that. Man, God did that. As I walk by um, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, harvest um, uh, of corn and whatnot that was growing up in the late summer, as I walk by that, walking down the driveway praying, and I looked at that corn and I went, man, God ordained that at the beginning. God made that to be. Sure, some farmer tilled the land and put the seed in, but only by God's grace. And I look at that corn, and I look at the beans, and I look at the sparrows flying up around me on the, on the wires up there, and I said, just don't drop anything on me. As I walk, and, and I, oh, that I walk through the valley of the shadow. Uh, and I look at the sparrows, and I look at the, the deer as they run through the forest, and I, and I hear the coyotes howling at night, and I go, man, God did that. God did that. And to see a precious little baby that was formed in the womb of their mother, to look at that baby and go, God did that. God did that. And to see the mountains and to see the valleys and to see the skies and to see the oceans and to see the lakes and to see all the life that's in there and go, wow, God did that. God did that. I like to praise God with thanksgiving and say, thank you, God, that I get to see that. Thank you, God. I sat there for a little while uh, when I was in Texas and kind of wondered about my eyes my eyes. As I looked out, and East Texas sort of has a Louisiana feel to it. It starts to bleed over the landscape. Sort of marshy, um, woodsy kind of. I thought, man, I almost feel like I'm in Louisiana down here. Uh, and and I, as I sat there and, and watched for deer, I thought about my eyes. and thought, whoa, God designed my eyes that I'm able to see 
and think and process and behold, wow, God, thank you for my eyes. Thank you for my eyes. As I prayed him for making my eyes, I was able to thank him for my eyes. The Bible says in Psalm 100 and verse 4, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Psalm 69, 30, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. That's why I told the kids, when you sing the doxology, you can do it with thankfulness in your voice. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And so, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And, and they didn't get it. I'm not, I wasn't chastising them. I was teaching them to sing with their heart, to sing knowing God saved them through Jesus Christ. Nehemiah 12, verse 46, for it says, uh, For in the days of David and Asaph of old, there were chief of singers and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. Folks, thanksgiving should be made or should make us praise God. As family comes in this week, uh, I, I love Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. I love Christmas. Simply because everybody that I love uh, mostly uh, 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 piles into places of, uh, of fellowship, whether it's family or church. People come on in and dad must spilling plates on my carpet this year. Um, uh, uh, two years in a row on Christmas, almost in the exact same spot, Dad went, Poof, lasagna, right on the carpet. I'm, I'm ready for this year. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I got all new tan carpet for it. No, I didn't. Uh, uh, but um, uh, I like that. And I, okay, so what? Uh, it gets cleaned up. But I look, man, I look at that and I, I, I like that. Yeah. I like having all the kids there, and the uncles there, and the, the yeah. friends there, and, and uh, my parents there, and, 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 and everybody's kind of running around and having a good time. And Man, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that. And I turn to God and go, God, thank you. Thank you. And when the church gathers together, you know, the harvest party, or the adult um, that we need to bring life-size Jenga this year, whatever that is, we need to do that. Um, uh, and, and all those different things. And I love that. Gathering with those people. And when we gather together, we are to praise God. I love Thanksgiving for the food and for family, for our faith. Amen. And we're very fortunate. You know, you could have been born um, in 2020, uh, 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 oh, I don't know, 2019 and been born in Gaza. Or 2019 and be born in Israel. You could have been, you could have been a lost person at that party on October 7th. Yeah, man. Where they swooped in, what, 1,400 people? 200 out of that festival, but, but um, 1,400 people murdered. Right. And how many kidnapped? 200. Yeah, yeah. yeah 200 kidnapped. Yeah. Uh, and so on and so forth. And listen, I, I, feel, I feel the only people I feel bad for, here's my humanitarian side here, are those, those little children. Children. Children are always caught in the middle of adult stupidity. Yeah, man. And adult lostness. The only thing I can feel for children of a an age of an account for that are uh, uh, still on the other side of accountability is Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, not except Gaza and Israel. They're included. Yes, sir. Red and yellow, black and white, Palestinian and Jewish. Jesus loves the little children of the world. He loves them. And you, yeah, you said, yeah, I heard you. Yeah, Ukraine and Russia. Yeah. And by the way, all the wars that went through that, Germany, Russia, England, when they were bombed by the Germans in World War II, but all, think, think, think Japan and China, Vietnam. Think about the, the, the unknown places we've never heard of in the unknown stories of Africa, North Korea, things we will, atrocities, uh, South America. Yes, sir? A, li a little known fact, three million uh, Africans died in World War I because of Belgian Congo, French North Africa. That's right. And the white man, the colonial, Colonizers. the colonial, that's right. Indians also, India was Indian, yeah. and, and brought them in, and they, you know, think of that, the millions of people, black men yep. that died for a white man's war, I, I don't mean to put it in there, I, I know what you mean. and I don't mean to interrupt, I know what you're saying, look at the bloodshed of this world, Yeah. and, how and, then, they, and how then to turn around and say, 
there are some fears here in America. Yeah. But overwhelmingly, I, I'm free and safe. Amen. I take precautions to care for the people around me because America, America is very well cocooned. Go around and just, just pull up some YouTubes from, from interviews. Um, uh, there's a guy named Jesse Waters. He used to have a thing called Waters World. And you'd go ask people, hey, who was the Civil War fought between? You know, who, who was the first president of the United States? People are, they're ignorant. They're dumb. And it's our public school system had, uh, and, and universities and parents. <laughs> Those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. It's written in the Bible. It's not like, folks, every word is for our learning. My people perish for lack of knowledge. That applies not only to Hebrews, but to Americans today. And if you have a brain inside your head and you're able to say, I know history. I know the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not maybe some, some history savant. But man, I know what our world, I know what's going on. I thank God for opening my eyes and opening my heart. That way I can thank him and say, thank you, Lord, that I am not like these. Help me to be a better witness to open the eyes of others. Mm -hmm. Thankfulness. Thankfulness. Praise God with sincerity. Praise God with song. Praise God with shouting. Amen. Praise God with sincerity. Be real when we praise. Be real when we praise. Praise God with song. As I prayed at Brother, and I'm, I'm done. As I prayed at Brother uh, Robin Smith's church before I preached down there, I couldn't help but almost well up and cry because I was preaching for my dad's friend who I grew up calling uncle. Yeah. First time preaching out, and I was preaching in the same city that Dr. J. Frank Norris used to preach in. Whew, that was kind of overwhelming to me. And as I prayed, I prayed with sincerity and thankfulness. And folks, and don't be surprised if a tear begins to come out of those old dry tear ducts. When's the last time we cried over thankfulness? Cried over saying, oh God, how blessed I am. God, I am undeserving. God, I am undeserving. You know, I, I, don't, I don't believe in necessarily in speaking things into existence, but I have... Lucas and Houston and Lincoln and Hudson and Deacon and a baby girl on the way and not a one of them, not a one of them has autism, not a one of them has a heart murmur, mm -hmm. not a one of them was born with uh, half a kidney or one uh, uh, or um, uh, half a liver, not one of them was born blind or deaf, dumb, but not blind or deaf. <laughs> now listen, I know <laughs> we're still living. The bigger your family, the bigger a chance. The bigger the, the, bigger the window of opportunity the devil gets uh, to try to um, break your faith and your thankfulness. But I, I, in everything, give thanks. So in health, give thanks. In sickness, give thanks. Give thanks. So when we give thanks to God and we praise Him, do it with sincerity, do it with song. The reason why many Christians don't sing with zeal and energy is that they're not thankful. Praise God with shouting. That's why so many people say, say amen. Say amen. You don't have to amen me, but if you hear, if you, God's good. Amen. You don't have to go, is Brother Jake right about you're not judging me. You say, man, I don't, care. I don't care who said it. God is good. That's right, brother. He is. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother John Hamlin says, my, my, my. Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> Dad, you know what I'm talking about? Did you hear him say that? Lucas and Houston and I were kind of, weren't making fun, but we were going, I've never heard that, you know. I've heard people say you're preaching before and go, park it there a while, preacher. Get him, preacher. That's right, preacher. Shout it, preacher. You know, there's all kinds of things to say. You know, Brother Sean, he interjects all the time. That's right, it's because of those liberals. Brother Brother Sean, you know, just interjecting kind of thing, you know. I love, hey man, I love Brother Sean. He's got great zeal. He's, he's being a good usher. Hey man, I, he was on top of everything today. Uh, I appreciate Brother Sean and what he does. But man, with shouting and with, with, with praising, but the best way we can praise the Lord and thank the Lord is by living a sanctified life. A sanctified life. Praise God with a sanctified life. A thankful heart will praise God by living holy, holy, holy for Him. 
We want to praise God. Any, did you know any backslider can come in here and sing the doxology? Any hard-hearted, cold soul can come in here and sing, save, save, save. But it's only the truly thankful person who can go out and live sanctified. And when bad commercials come up, go, whoop, nope. And when bad conversations come up, go, whoop, nope. And when bad thoughts and, 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 and uh, uh, foul language or uh, anger or bitterness, or not, not anger, nothing wrong with anger, but bitterness, uncontrolled anger, amen, unchecked anger, uh, anger and bitterness and unforgiveness, the sanctified side of life says, no, no. I am holy for he is holy. I'm going to try to live for God and do what Jesus would do if he walked in my shoes today. That is the best way we can praise God. And that's the best way we can be thankful. That's good. So, do you want to have Thanksgiving 365 days a year? I do. I do. I do. And to be honest, the more and more I get into the Word of God and I pray and I really get down to business with the Lord and give my heart into prayer, I do get up a little bit more thankful. Thankful that He hurt me. How neat is it to have answers to prayer? And it's neat. But I always get a kick out of going, can you believe what I want? I'm done, I said. Can you believe this? Yes, I prayed, and I kept on praying, and I received that thing. How neat that is. God in heaven heard me. God heard me. <laughs> Knowing my dispositions and my failings. But God heard me, and he answered me out of this holy temple. God heard me. I get more of a kick out of God hearing me. I love the thing that I received of him, but God heard. Whoa. Whoa. And God is near to them that are near to him. If we are far off, he is, he is within a decision's moment, a, a decision, a moment of decision of being near again. Uh, I said it in Sunday school. If we live wickedly, God won't hear us. And if we regard iniquity in our heart, God won't hear us. If you're bitter, tell God you're bitter. Because then he can heal you. But if you regard your bitterness, if you regard your anger, if you regard your uh, uh, unforgiveness, if you say, no, this is, it's mine. And, and God, if you don't accept me and my pet iniquity, then we're not going to walk along. That's, that's a, just ridiculous. I mean, nobody in their right mind would say that, but we feel that way sometimes. I felt that way. Like, God, I'm holding on to this for a while. And then it started to burn a little bit. And it started to get uncomfortable. Like, you know what? I like holding my son Deacon, but sometimes he gets heavy. Like, somebody else take this kid. I, I don't want to hold him forever. I like that he's a baby and we have a good time and whatnot, but I don't want to hold him forever. Can you imagine me walking into church with Lucas? <laughs> You know that's what a lot of Christians are doing? They take that, they took that little baby liar, that little baby unforgiveness, and aw, I'm, I'm just gonna hold on to it because it makes me feel better. And before they know it, like, Luke, you gotta carry me. Uh, and then they depend on that thing to carry them. Take it to Jesus, confess it, forsake it, lay all your cards out on the table before the Lord, lest you do agree. So you two can walk together and watch and see if you don't turn your life into something of thankfulness. Now, when you give it over to the Lord and understand that he's forgiven you and he's got great plans for you and he wants to help you and he wants to prosper you, you'll turn into somebody thankful. You want to be thankful? I want to be thankful. I want our church to be thankful. And when the Lord comes on back, amen, either we go to meet him in glory or he comes back to receive us, to meet him in the air, I want him to say, listen, I... I don't know. I, I kind of thought for a while, and I'm not sure. I, I need to look into it a bit. I wonder if we'll be judged as a church. You know, as, as, a, as a, no, I will be as a pastor. But I wonder if you, like, man, Three Rivers, your scorecard is A and this, like a report card. What would we score? No, what would we score? Uh, and um, let's just keep trying to upgrade our grades, amen, uh, until Jesus Christ comes back. Uh, but man, Thanksgiving's this week. I hope you have a wonderful time. Um, uh, don't, uh, don't, uh, I hope you talk about politics and religion the whole time. And uh, I hope you talk about Jesus, uh, the King of Kings is He. 
The Lord of the Lord supreme through all eternity. That's what I hope you talk about, amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for our church. I thank you for our great heritage. Uh, next year in May will be 30 years. Wow. <laughs> 30 years Three Rivers Baptist Church has had a footprint here in Fort Wayne. Now, Lord, I believe you've had a footprint on Fort Wayne, Indiana, since the beginning, I think you knew all along. Uh, this didn't just pop up overnight and you go, oh, who was there with, oh, Doug Jackson, three rooms, well, that's neat. I hope they do well. Lord, you had it planned. You knew each one of us before we were even born. You were the all-knowing God and you are all-powerful. Lord, we thank you for everything you've done in the past, throughout the world, up until this moment. And Lord, we trust in you. For those of us who don't trust, for those Christians who are struggling, for those Christians who are, are doubting, Lord, I'd ask not that you'd have to prove yourself to them, but you'd show yourself to them. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you would, out of grace, out of love, that somebody would take a small step of faith and somebody would take a giant step of faith to say, God, I need you to do something big. Lord, I need you to do something in my life. I've been having a hard time and I've not been feeling it. I've not been faithing it. Lord, I'd ask that you would show yourself that you want your people to be thankful. Lord, I'm not asking you to go outside and operate outside of your word. But Lord, if you were gracious toward Jonah, Surely you can be gracious toward a member here at our church, to a, a Christian who's away from you. Oh, Heavenly Father, that you would draw men to yourself again. Lord, build this church again. Uh, fill the bus routes, fill the pews. Fill our, our hearts with thanksgiving and with praise. Help us to consider the lilies, consider the small things, and in return, remember you and say how great thou art. Oh, Heavenly Father, keep us safe this week. Help us to enjoy food and family this week. We love you. Thank you for saving us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.